Well, here at Citizens Bank Park tonight, celebrating German heritage. And you see the accordion player and the sounds of some German music and some great food as well in the ballpark, but all getting ready for a baseball game. It's the Miami Marlins and the Philadelphia Phillies as NBC Sports Philadelphia presents Weekends with Schmidt, presented by Acme Market. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Phillies Baseball alongside John Cruck and Mike Schmidt. I'm Greg Murphy in for Tom McCarthy tonight. And we're talking about offense because last night the bats came alive. Mike, it was certainly good to see. Right. It was a long time coming. And one of the guys right in the middle of it, Aaron Altair. And that certainly was good to yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back, Aaron Altair. I sat in the hotel and watched the game, watched, listened to you guys. It was a great one to watch. And let's go right to last night. Uh, three run home run to get the game started off of Chen, a slider, a two strike slider inside. Later on, hard throwing Guerrero gave up this one almost to the same spot in left center. Aaron had a couple of singles as well and a line drive to right field uh, hit the ball hard five times last night. So that's Aaron Altair. He's back. And I got to tell you one game can do a lot for a guy. I remember like four times in my career John I'm sure you, you do too where you had those pivotal games where something clicked something clicked in your stroke in your attitude. I don't know what it is and each one of them were sort of stepping stones to greater things in my career. I know it's late in the season. I'm a big Altair fan. And I know you guys are. He's yep. almost a five tool player. And uh, let's hope that last night's game was a game that clicks for Aaron Altair as we go forward. Yeah, he did it with the bat last night. He did it with his legs as well. Some great base running. All good to see. But also part of that offense last night, John Kruk, was Reese Hoskins, who's been a part of this offense all season long. And when he is going, the Phillies are going. Yeah, happy for Aaron Altair. But if the Phillies are going to get back in this race and make a run over the next couple weeks of this season, this is the gentleman that has to carry the load. And last night after two foul pop-ups to first baseman, Derek Dietrich he finally got out in front of one and hit one in the seats and left and this is the guy that we need and you look at what he's done uh, in the history of the Phillies here at least 30 doubles 30 homers 90 RBIs and 80 walks in a single season he's in great company right there with those two gentlemen Bobby Abreu and Jim Tomey but I'll reiterate we go as Reese goes and if Reese continues to swing the bat like he did last night who knows what can happen. We can get on a run and maybe reel off about seven or eight in a row. Well, that's what they're going to need to do to get back in the race in the NL East. The Braves did lose earlier today. Will they score 14 runs tonight? Who knows? But Vince Velasquez will take the baseball for the Phillies. And Harleen Garcia, the left-hander for the Miami Marlins. He's 2-2. Two and two. We've got baseball coming up here in South Philadelphia. Lineups in first pitch when we come back.
Bills here tonight. Marlins and Phillies here at Citizens Bank Park. Nice night for baseball, 75 degrees, some clouds in the sky. We saw the sun for the first time in a while today as well. The Marlins starting lineup looks like this. It's brought to you by Xfinity, the fastest internet in Philadelphia. JT Riddle will play shortstop and lead it off, followed by the rookie Brian Anderson. JT Real Muto behind the plate, he'll bat third. Castro, Dietrich, and Brinson, followed by Austin Dean, Sierra, and Jar Harleen Garcia doing the pitching. And for the Phils, appearing in his 29th game, his 28th start of the season, he's 9 and 11. Vince Velasquez with an ERA of 4.30. And guys, another chance for Vince Velasquez to go out there and show this team that he can do this, be a part of the rotation going forward. Yeah, and another chance for us to pick up a game. That's right. <laughs> Atlanta having lost already today. Big news. It's been a while for those guys. Yeah, it's a and funny game, isn't it? You you yeah. beat on Max Scherzer last night, right. and then today they couldn't hit Jeremy Hellickson. Which, no disrespect to Jeremy, but he's not Scherzer. Agreed. That's that's the beauty of this game. You never know. This one is underway as JT Riddle takes a strike. So and one. There you take a look at the current standings now with the Braves lost today. Phil seven games back and pick up another half game with a win tonight over the Marlins. Next pitch is outside to Riddle for a ball. It's one and one. A lot of our players, our offensive players, should feel good about their their hitting right now. We have a game like last night. Everybody comes in feeling good, relaxed. Line shot is foul. It's one and two now to Riddle. How much can you build off of that from last night? Is it the old cliche? It's just as good as, as the next I starting pitcher. But I, I would take five or six <laughs> runs. Absolutely. <laughs> the, the problem is, yeah. is we know this is a bullpen game for the Marlins. So, you know, you're probably going to be facing a different pitcher every at bat. Here's the one-two pitch to Riddle, swing and a miss, and the first strikeout of the evening, and the first out of the ball game here in the top of the first. The, it's been the recipe against the Marlins. Get ahead, elevate, they swing through. Eflin did it last night. We've seen Pavetta do it to him. And, you know, we know Vince can get that thing up in the mid 90s up in the zone. Well, that'll bring up Brian Anderson, 272 this season, 10 home runs, 59 RBIs for Anderson. First pitch is upstairs for a ball one and oh that that's something to watch for right there because Ramos wanted a fastball down and away and he threw it up and in and that's you know you can't make mistakes I don't care who you're playing Anderson fouls that one out of play it's one and one now to the Marlins third baseman Vasquez looks like he's <clears throat> excuse me free and easy tonight hit 95 on one and 93 on a couple don't guide that baby. Just let it fly. Wing it. Wing it with an idea. Sounds like a plan. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Anderson, ground ball to the left side. Kingery charges. Two outs. The easiest thing for Velasquez to do, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a little scratchy throat, is. Is ride that fastball, that four seamer up in the strike zone. I mean, that's if he can get ahead of hitters, and as John said, just let her fly up there, 93 yeah. to 95. Or at bats will be short. Yeah, when you talk to opposing players about Vince, they said it's 93 to 95, but it feels like it's 97 to 100 because it has that late life on it. He looks like he's the hardest thrower we have on our team. The way it comes out of his hand, the way right. it pops the glove. Very alive. Well, he's working ahead of JT Real Muto. Going one. That one's upstairs and inside for a ball. One and one to Real Muto. Marlins catcher homered last night. Number 21 on the season for him in the sixth inning of last night's game. The only blemish on Zach Eflin's line last night. He takes that one low and outside for a ball. It's two and one. It's 
sails inside. So three and one now to JT Real Muto. This is where you got to be careful. You remember down in Miami, Jake got behind. He threw a fastball up and away, and he hit it out to right field. You got to be careful here, trying to throw something away. He'll go with it. And swings through that one. 94 mile per hour fastball from Velasquez. And the count is full to Real Muto. Starlin Castro waits on deck. This was last night in the sixth inning. He didn't miss that one. No, sir. He's a good player. I mean, a really good player. 3 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. And he got him. So two strikeouts in the inning for Vince Velasquez. And 1 2 3 go the Marlins here in the top of the first. We'll head to the bottom of the first. No score in Philadelphia. Velasquez showing that, well, it's coming out of the hand pretty good. Two strikeouts in the inning. And that'll finish it up. Head to the bottom of the first. No score here in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Here is Phil's lineup brought to you by Xfinity, the fastest internet in Philadelphia. Cesar Hernandez will lead it off, followed by Reese Hoskins and Jose Bautista. Wilson Ramos will do the catching again tonight and bat fourth. Carlos Santana is over there at third. Aaron Altair, Roman Quinn, Scott Kingery, shortstop batting eighth, and Vince Velasquez batting ninth and doing the pitching for the Phils. And Harleen Garcia making his seventh start of the season for the Marlins, appearing in his 24th game. He's 2 and 2 with a 5.05. ERA the left hander was a well he was a, a late announcement in terms of starting this one guys and the Phil's offensive lineup reacted to that you'll see a lot of righties in there tonight take a look at the scouting report yeah not 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 anything special 92 slider change up I, I like his stuff but it hasn't he hasn't figured it out yet at this level. Hope he doesn't figure it out tonight as Cesar Hernandez takes that first pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Well, that's got to be tough, though. You know, you're bouncing around from you get a start and you go back in the bullpen for a month and then you get another start. One and one to Hernandez, 257 on the season for Cesar, 11 home runs, 49 RBIs. Swinging the bat well of late. Pops that one down the right field line. Got to find the seats. One and two to Cesar Hernandez. And John, you mentioned this is going to be basically a bullpen game for the Miami Marlins. Well, they got someone down there already doing their yeah. aerobics. Dave Kapler saying they expect Garcia to throw maybe about 40 pitches. As Cesar hits that one to right center field and that might find some real estate. Nope. Able to close the gap is Sierra and he makes the catch. Thought that one was going to get to the wall there for a minute. Yeah he went a long way for that ball. <laughs> Just hung up in the air. Not a, not a wind here tonight really uh, to affect it. Maybe a tiny bit blowing in. Yeah. You would have loved to have been here last night Michael. That ball was traveling. Yeah, every ball that hit in the left, air last night looked like. Left and left center <laughs> was flying, and 
That's the one reach. You know, he had the two pop-ups to foul out to first base. And he's, but he looked like that time he more, he made a conscious effort to try to stay. See how he dips sometimes when he takes pitches? Oh, I that, don't like that, that, yeah. I don't either, but that causes you to get jammed and hit little pop-ups the other way. He stayed firm on his backside his last at bat, or at that home run, and man, did that ball sound good coming off the bat. That one catches the inside corner, so it's quickly 0-2 to Reese Hoskins. There's the Marlins bullpen yeah, starting folks, to get loose. What John was saying about <coughs> dipping, <coughs> excuse me, um, watch when the hitters take a pitch. If their hands come forward when they take a pitch. Oh, that was swung on and hit well. Right down the left field line. If it's fair, it's oh, gone, but it is foul. Just foul, but back to my point. If you flinch your hands forward, if you hit hard with your stride leg and flinch your hands forward, you're not in good position to hit. You basically have to. I don't know if we'll see it here. This is probably the foul home run. But uh, again, watch the hitters, and if you see those hands flinch forward, they're not in good position to hit. Well, the count is 0-2 to Hoskins. And he takes that one inside for a ball. It's one and two. Garcia wanted that. I mean, this, it, it, he has good stuff, Garcia. Just again, he's young. Try to figure it out. Ground ball to the left side into the shift. Second baseman Castro has it. Makes the throw for the second out. That was interesting. I, have you ever been called off? Well, you have put it at third, but have you ever seen middle infielders call each other off? I thought <laughs> it might have been an easier play for the shortstop. Yeah, it might have been. <laughs> but you know, Starlin Castro spent. The majority of his career, all his career with the Cubs until his last maybe year or so as a shortstop. So the, the arm strength's always there. Well, Jose Bautista will be the batter. He came pretty close to having two home runs last night. This is the difference between today, well, me and Bautista. Okay. He had a pretty good game yesterday, right? Phillies win. You yep. would not change your uniform. No, right? he's got his pants up. <laughs> That's like that's like when you've lost like six in a row and you ain't had a hit in a month. That's when you're switching. Yeah, then you switch something up. You shave your beard, you shave your mustache, you grow something, you <laughs> you know, you wear something different. And all of that works. As he squibs that one up the first baseline. And Garcia is able to make the play and tag out Bautista for the final out. So Reese Hoskins gave him a scare, but the Phils go down one, two, three here in the first. We head to the second. No score in Philadelphia. Time this season to take on the Phils. It's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Game time is Monday and Tuesday at 7 o'clock here at Citizens Bank. On Wednesday, 6 o'clock, 
first pitch for the Phillies and the Mets. Visit phillies.com to get your tickets right now as we celebrate German Heritage Night here at the ballpark. She wears that well. It's Velasquez back to work for the Phils facing Starlin Castro. Gets that first pitch over for a strike. It's 0 1. Little get over slider. That'll get you a strike one anytime. Now they can work him in. A little jammed up last night, didn't he? Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, and you saw First that. Just a couple at bats. You saw that one there. He was trying to get out in front of one there. <laughs> He's like, man, how long is this road trip? I'm running out of bats. <laughs> Might have been the two shortest fly balls I've ever seen to second base. The 0 2 pitch. Foul out of play. I got to think that the entire Marlins team is thinking how much longer on this road trip oh. As they sit one and six on the road. I remember they had to they had to overnight bats to Jeffrey Leonard. He, I think Dave Dravecki got him four or five times in one game. I think he got him three times in one at bat. They get him right there into Starlin Castro. He goes down swinging third strikeout for Vince Velasquez. I remember Dravecki had that hard cutter. Oh yeah. Oh, oh my for goodness. Sure. He did. Speaking of, speaking of good sliders. Yeah, that was a good one. Well, that'll bring up Derek Dietrich. To face Vince Velasquez. Dietrich won for four last night. And you see he's been struggling a bit though in his last eight games. First pitch is big swing and a miss. It's 0 1. Well hit center field. Roman Quinn going back on it and he's going to have to turn and watch it hit off the wall. Played off a of bounce but Derek Dietrich will end up at second base with a stand up double. That's the first hit of the ball game for the Marlins. What well, was tagged John. That's a 401 foot line drive. Line that, drive. I mean, you, hey, if it had any elevation Roman might have ran it down but man. Hit right did. off that rubber thing there and just kind of popped right up in the yeah. air. Here we'll see if what, this is a good swing. Look at the head through the ball. 18. 18 degree launch iron. Well, get, maybe there's something to that. He might, get <laughs> he might get released tomorrow. I think you'd take that every at bat, though, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, you don't want to hit line drives. It's Dietrich's 25th double of the year. So he's down there at second with one out. Lewis Brinson is the batter. First pitch to Brinson is inside for a ball. It's 1 0. Don't tell me we're going to have to start referring to launch angles on a regular basis now. You don't have to. You can talk about all you want. I'm going to be muted over here. But that was a hell of a good swing right there. Sure was. I don't care what the launch angle said. And I know someone's going to say, well, if he was at 20 degree, it would have went out. Well, right. John, I hate to tell you, but that's easier. 26 said. degrees is the optimum home run launch angle. Easier said than done. 2-0 pitch is a little bit low. 3-0 and now to Lewis Brinson. We have bullpen action, Murph. We have action in the pen for the Marlins. I like this kid, too. Austin Dean, you, you mentioned it, Mike, on deck. He, he's got a good approach. Well, you, you won't see. You'll see. Uh, I'm interested in Austin Dean's launch angle on his swings because I've watched him when we played him down there and last night. He takes his bat almost on a downward plane through the ball, and I'm, I'm interested in that launch angle. Of course, I don't want to be replaying a home run or anything, but maybe. No. 3 0 curveball? That's what it looked like, 79 miles per hour. Got it over That's for a, a strike. Probably the best time you can throw that curveball for the first time in a game when you're 3 0. That was. That was strange. Really weird. To Brinson. Must have a history. From the stretch, here's the 3 1 pitch. Swing and miss. 3 and 2 now to Brinson. Velasquez battles back into the count. Some batting just 201 on the season. It's 
Swing and a miss, and he got him. Big strikeout for Velasquez, his fourth, and that's the second out of the inning. Well, Tuesday, it's the final Authentic Fan Appreciation Night at the ballpark, and fans in our exclu exclusive special section will get exclusive swag and VIP surprises, including a chance to sit in the NBC Sports Philadelphia suite. We want you to be here, but if you can't, there will be special giveaways on social media as well during the game. Check it out, phillies.com slash authentic fan. So two outs, and Austin Dean will be the batter. Lewis Brunson has to be pretty confused right now. Yeah. <clears throat> three and zero curveball, three and one slider, three and two fastball. To a guy that hit two oh one coming into the that at bat. Like when did I become Babe Ruth all of a sudden? <laughs> Dietrich takes his lead off his second. Over for a strike, the count is even one and one. Well, that's a pitch right there where I cannot understand why today's hitters don't swing at it, right? You got a guy throwing nasty stuff up there, young young hitter. Why do I want to spot him a fastball? I mean, it splits the middle of the plate on a one and one and zero count. A little bit low there, two and one now to Dean. Maybe there's just a sense of modern hitters, today's hitters, of really the at bat doesn't start until like the third or fourth pitch. I'd like to have been out of there by then. <laughs> well, we didn't see a whole lot of that, uh, that last night from the Phil's offense. They were pretty aggressive last night. 2 1 pitch. Fouled at the plate. I mean, we all understand that a bar closes at two, but that don't mean you have to stay there till then. You can get out of there by midnight. Well, this young, you? this young man took the fastball down Not the you. middle. Not to interrupt your conversation about bars, bars but <laughs> <laughs> he swings at a curveball or some kind of a breaking ball that, you know, broke sharply off the outside corner of the plate. Does that make sense? Take, than takes the fastball, fastball down yeah. the middle. Yeah. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Line drive, right center field, and that's going to fall in for a hit. So Dietrich will come around and score. And Austin Dean with the RBI single here in the second. And the Marlins have a 1 0 lead. Austin Dean, I'm telling you, this young man's going to be a good hitter. So you, you wanted to know the launch angle on, on Austin Dean? How about 17 see, degrees there? Well, it, it, we're watching it over again, but you see how his top hand takes yeah. the bat almost down on the ball? I don't understand how that can be a 17 degree launch angle. I really, I'd love to know that. I mean, I'd love to know how they figure that. And I know John's on mute right now. <laughs> I don't know how they figure it out. <laughs> I don't. I'm going to find out next spring, so I'll know a little bit more than I do. Now, of the two of us sitting here with you, Smitty, who, which one you think would know how to calculate the launch angle? How about of the three of us? <laughs> Carl. Carl, help us out with the launch angle. Well, we got a guy in the booth down there, you know, uh, that's talking in our ears that's giving us these launch angles, and we're going. How do they figure that out? Let's ask Jeff. Sierra lines that one foul. Just foul down the left field line. So the count is 0 and 2 now to Sierra. With Dean over there at first base. So if Sierra gets on they're going to pinch hit for Garcia right. I would think they would at this point yeah. Sheesh. It's inside That's for it. a ball it's one and two. Is that O'Brien down there because we got mixed up last I did with O'Brien and and Bostic. The five and the eight I my eyesight's not very good anymore. I think that's O'Brien. 
I think you're right about that. Well, the count is one and two to Sierra. With Dean leading off first. The one-two pitch. That one is punched in the left field. Aaron Altair comes in, but he's not going to be able to get it. It falls in for another hit. And the Marlins now runners at first and second with two outs here in the second. Garcia was overworked today, wasn't he? And we were run out of paper, Michael. So it is Pete O'Brien who is the pinch hitter for the Marlins. Yeah. Is he in relation to the Pete O'Brien that played for Texas and Carl? Hit that up for us, brother. He's on it. Garcia with a heck of an inning. It'll be tough. interesting to see what the Phils do to counter. Tough taking him out with a no hitter. I mean, uh, you know. <laughs> One inning, no hitter. He could have made history tonight, Murph. We'll just never know, John. We'll never know. Meanwhile, the count is 1 0 to O'Brien. Runners on first and second with two outs. Pitch from Velasquez it is upstairs for a ball 2 0. Garcia threw 12 pitches, though. So now he could probably pitch tomorrow out of the pen, right? 12 pitches is nothing. Yeah, I would imagine well, he, he could. He warmed he up. He needed them. I don't think he had any high leverage pitches in that first inning, although Reese almost hit a homer, so maybe that buckled him down a little bit. Baseball, what a game. 2 0 pitch inside for a ball. It's 3 0. Top of the order looms on deck. JT Riddle. One run across here in the second for the Marlins. Looking for that 3 0 curveball here. Worked the last time. Got a feeling he's taken, but who knows? Outside and he walks him. Walks him on four pitches. So the bases are loaded now for Miami. And JT Riddle will be the bat batter. Rick Granitz would like a word with Vince Velasquez. He used to love going. Did you go to the mound when the pitching coach? Who's your pitching coach when you played? Mark uh, Ray Ripplemeyer. Um, who else? Let's see. Back in the Carlton days, it was Ray Ripplemeyer. He didn't come out to talk to Lefty, did he? Not much. Not much. <laughs> no. I wouldn't end well. That was probably by design, yeah. I used to love going out listening to Johnny Padres. Oh, everything was positive. And then when he'd walk off the mound, I'd be like, hey, Pod, what are you watching? It tells you that he has great stuff. <laughs> it is beautiful. Well, 25 pitches so far this inning for Vince Velasquez. That'll try to get JT Riddle and get out of this without any other damage. Riddle struck out in his first at bat. Takes that one a bit low for a ball. It's 1 0. Phillies have always, the last, what, four or five years that I remember, had the whole infield in on mound visits by the pitching coach. Uh, just maybe they think they're going to be told to play a certain position and move around defensively or something. I don't know. I don't know what the interest is. I, I just used to like going and listen to Johnny Padres. He was. Colorful, fun, fun, funny. Yeah. Oh God, no, he's funny. Yeah, he's very positive, right? Yeah, he? but he was funny too. Funny's good. Velasquez working from the stretch. The one-one pitch. Now back to one and two. They got him last time with a fastball up and away. Let's see if they. Try to get him to chase another one up there. Three hits and a walk in the inning. The Marlins have scored one. They've got the bases loaded with two outs. But Velasquez is ahead in the count, one and two. Fans here in Philadelphia trying to spur Vince Velasquez on. 
One two pitch. Now back. You're right John they did. Quite as up as much as the one in the last at bat but. I think you know, he's got one to waste if they could get something up and away to him see if he'll chase again. Ramos flashes the signs. That high pitch just looks so good out of oh. the pitcher's hands. That one has hit well. Right field going back on it is Bautista. He looks up and it hits off the bottom of the wall and gets past him. Three runs are going to score, and that is going to be a bases clearing double for JT Riddle. And all of a sudden, Marlins are up four nothing. John JT got to give him credit. He made the adjustment on that fastball. He said, "I'm not swinging underneath another one of those." And here you see the replay. Yeah, a little bit of a downswing on that thing, and yeah. uh, that's the results right there. Didn't get it up enough, and then yeah. you know, once I, I don't know if they would have, they would have had O'Brien at home, but you know, Batista missing that ball coming off the wall just. Took every opportunity of getting the out at home away. This is not what you wanted to see for the Phillies. Bullpen action in the second. Victor Arano starting to get loose as Brian Anderson steps in for the Marlins. Isn't it amazing how good he was throwing up there in the first inning and how that turned that fast? I just I find it hard to believe. Swings through that one. It's one and one now. Anderson grounded out to short in his first at bat. And Velasquez got the first three batters of the game. One, two, three in the first inning. But after getting Starlin Castro to strike out the lead off the second, he's found himself in trouble ever since. One, one pitch. He swings at that. So one and two now to Anderson. Look at this. And they throw him behind the Middle runner and they're three outs. He took his helmet off. How about that? So a base running mistake by JT Riddle and the Phils were able to get out of it. All kinds of confusion out there. Marlins though score four in the inning and they lead it four to nothing. Mark your regular season game plus get a free subscription to MLB at bat premium blackout and other restrictions apply visit MLB.tv to take advantage of this limited time offer. Four nothing Marlins as we head to the bottom of the second. But let's take a look at how the last uh, half of the inning ended. There you see JT Riddle leading off second. He thought that was the third strike takes off his helmet. Good heads up play by Wilson Ramos. Gets it down to uh, Hernandez and he says, well, well, wasn't that strike three? No, it was not. It was strike two. 
So a base running blunder by the Marlins helped the Phils out, but not before Miami is able to push four across in that inning. So now Phils are going to play a little catch up. Well, I'd like to say that I've never forgotten the outs, but I'd be lying to everyone. <laughs> Bad thing is, when I forgot the outs, the guy tagged up from second and scored on a fly ball. And I had to lead off the next inning. It was probably like a week after I got traded here. And I had to lead off the next inning and struck out on three pitches. You think they welcomed me with open arms? <laughs> I remember one I, I had in Shea Stadium. I, I did. I, uh, I started walking toward third base. I was on second, started walking toward third, and I actually almost made it to third. Before they, before they realized it was something like everybody thought that I, what is he doing? Th thought that I had called timeout or something. <laughs> It's I'm very just sneaky. walking over there toward third. You know, or the dugout's right yeah. on the way past third base. And uh, I got near third, and they threw the ball, and of course, I went, I called timeout. That's <laughs> third one. I called timeout. What do you mean? I, I called timeout. And uh, obviously, the umpires didn't remember me calling timeout. That's like, it's kind of quite embarrassing. That's like really a delay steal. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who played the game and, and hadn't lost track of the outs is lying. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get on base enough, so didn't much matter. Brett Graves is the new pitcher for the Marlins here in the second. And he's working behind Wilson Ramos. Count is three and one now to Ramos. It'll be Ramos, then Santana, and Aaron Altair for the Phils. And I guess at this point, guys, just start chipping away. Plenty of time left in this game. Lots of at bats to go, so. And Ramos watches that one sail outside, so he walks. He's the first base runner for the Phils and a leadoff base runner here in the bottom of the second. I found that Wilson Ramos not only is a good hitter, but he's got a good eye. Oh, yeah. Hey, four runs. Bullpen, you got the, you know, you're going to face the bullpen the rest of the game. Might as well score a couple here, get back in it. Well, Carlos Santana will be the batter for the Phils, 233 this season, 23 home runs and 82 RBIs for Carlos. First pitch to Carlos is on the outside corner for a strike. Like how do you determine when it's a bullpen game like which guy you're going to bring in the second the third the fourth like how does that work. One pitch inside. Well, well, most likely you tell them before the game right you're second in, you're third in. But like what happens if the first innings longer and you want Santana to hit from the left side or whatever. Yeah. You the know. Right side. I. Second guy in comes no matter what. Sure, Don Mattingly thought he'd get a little bit more out of his starters. That one is hit to left field and is uh, gets turned around and off the glove of Austin Dean. So Wilson Ramos heads the third and Carlos Santana in the second. He got turned around when he was trying to make the play, but gotta believe that that's an error. I do Austin too. Dean. We'll see how it scored. Phils will take it. You see, wrong shoulder and then off the glove. Well, and he, and he made really made two mistakes. One, you know, from a lefty, it's going to slice toward the left field line. And two, he forgot who was on first base. Ramos was just yeah. rounded second when he had the ball in his hand. And luckily, he just kind of just tossed it tossed in. Tossed it in. Yeah, you're right about that because they might have been able to get Ramos at third. As it stands, the Phils have two on, nobody out, second and third, and Aaron Altair will be the batter. First pitch to Altair gets away. I think that crossed him up. Yeah, I think so. They're going to have a conversation about yeah, it. Yeah, they are. I don't think it's going to be a two sided conversation either. Take a look. Oh, God. Well, scored an error, right? Yeah. yeah. He's looking for a breaking ball, and Graves threw a fastball. Hit right him in right the chest. In the chest. 
Well, it's time for our Geico quote of the day as Aaron Altair steps in on his two home run fire RBI game last night. For some reason, the last couple of days, it felt really good in BP. I decided to bring it into the game and see how it would translate, and I was able to do that. Well, I would suggest doing that a little more often. <laughs> how about right now? Be all right. It was interesting. When's the last time you saw the pitching coach stay on the mound? The catcher vacated the mound. Yeah, he, he, he was he was upset. So runners on second and third for the Phils. Big swing and a miss by Altair. So 0 and 2. The pitch that crossed him up was a strike. Ooh, right down, right the, down the, middle. the middle. Yeah. Hit him right in the chest. <laughs> oh, is he upset? Oh. So Graves is ahead of Aaron Altair 0 and 2. No two pitch in the dirt. This play by Ray Muto. Yeah, you're right, John. It, we're going to be kind of facing a, a triple A staff in, in this game right here, right now. Uh, at least for the first five or six innings, uh, you know, you're going to use a lot of guys you called up, probably, right? I would think so. One two pitch side for a ball two and two. Well they have 11 bullpen members down there. Philly's just only with 15. <laughs> Outside now full count to Aaron Altair works himself back in. Those are close pitches to take. That would be me if I was in the bullpen. Just riding the bike? Yeah. He's practicing up for your thing next year. Toward the shore? Toward the shore. He might right. be in it with you. I like it. 3 2 pitch. And no one away. And he walks him. So Aaron Altair works himself back into it, works himself to walk. And the bases are loaded with Phillies with nobody out here in the second. And that'll bring up Roman Quinn. And it's time for our Indeed player resume. We'll take a look at the 13 straight starts reaching base for Roman Quinn at that time. And 380, two home runs, eight RBIs, OPS 1.095. He has been swinging the bat well. And he's got an opportunity to get the Phils right back in this one. First pitch to Quinn, fouled straight back. Well, we saw this last night when they tried to turn a double play. They couldn't quite pull that one off. And of course, right now, if you're the Marlins, you would take it out any way you can get it, even if a run does score. Another swing and a miss. It's 0 2 to Roman Quinn. There you see the runners Altair, Santana, and Ramos. Scott Kingery waits on deck. Big swing and a miss, and he got him. So that's the first out of the inning, and it's a big one for Graves. And as Dribble Cabrera is going to take the place of Scott Kingery, so the changes have begun. So as Dribble Cabrera will come in, check into the game. And that from the left side. Good numbers pinch hitting for Cabrera. Three for ten. We're all kind of looking at each other up here, but the philosophy uh, that Gabe Kapler is playing with tonight is we have to win this ball game, and every chance we have to score runs, we're going to put the best hitter we have at home plate. Pitch to Cabrera is low for a ball, one and zero. Oh. Yeah, this is not unexpected. We we knew that once a right-hander was brought into this game by the Marlins, that they would counter on the Phillies side. It just happened so quickly because Garcia got through one inning. Well, 
swings the, through that one. It's Don, one Mad Don Mattingly's pinch hitter did all right. He worked the walk to load the bases. And Riddle hit the bases clearing double. So let's see if our pinch hitter can do something here. Justin Bohr has moved into the on deck circle for the Phillies. Michael, we have 11 bench players, too. I'm just, I'm just uh, slashing them out as they go. Fouled at the plate. It's one and two to his dribble Cabrera. Raised from the stretch. A little low, two and two to Cabrera. There's Ramos over at third, Santana at second, and Altair at first. One out. Tip back into the glove of JT Rail Muto, and that's another strikeout. So the second strikeout for Graves, and now two outs. And that'll bring up Justin Bohr. I told you to, to write small. They ain't got enough lines on this paper to keep us with all the changes that are going to be made today. AC Bohr's numbers as a pinch hitter five for 15, three home runs, eight RBIs. Phils need to get something here with two outs and the base is loaded. First pitch to board and it's punched down the left field line with foul. So and one to Justin Boer. Well, Graves is doing most of this with fastballs. You got. Uh, Roman Quinn on fastballs, Cabrera on fastballs. That one sails outside, 93 miles per hour. It's one and one to four. I don't know why, but I just have a feeling this game's going to be tied here pretty soon. I like that feeling, John. Yeah, I just have a feeling with Boer. Against his former team. One, one pitch, one on, line drive off the glove. Of Anderson and into left field. One run will score. Here comes Santana. The ball is bobbled out there in left field. And that is a big hit for Justin Bohr. A two run pinch single. And it's 4 2 Miami now. Yeah, that is a big hit. And Gabe's plan has paid off. Got back in the ball game with one swing of the bat. Game of inches just off the glove. Oh, man. And I'm sure Anderson is probably thinking that's the last place he's going to hit it. Right. But he has been going the other way since he's become a Philly. Hmm. Just out of the reach. And you know, Dean, again, bobbles it. And that gave Altair. That's how Altair got to third base. But I wonder if that's another error for Dean. Because Aaron was stopped at second. I would imagine it is. So they get runners at the corners now with two outs. Top of the order for the Phils. Why not get one more right here? Cesar Hernandez is the batter. Takes that one outside for a ball. It's 1 0. Oh. And Mike, you're right. Game of inches. Two inches to the left, and this inning's over. Right. Hernandez has that one pass. Jose David Flores. So 1 and 1 now to Cesar Hernandez, who flew out in his first at bat. But you got you got to give Bohr credit. I mean that's one thing the Phillies have not done well this year and that's hit with men on base. <clears throat> and that's what it takes. It takes going the other way. It takes giving into the pitcher. Just accepting that you're going to get one or two in not trying to hit the home run. Especially with two strikes. Yeah. yeah nice piece of hitting and. You know if the Phillies had walked away with nothing. From that that would have been a. A little bit of a blow. So you get the two, and they can still add more. 
There's the one-two pitch to Hernandez. Ground ball left side. Riddle has it. Takes the short way to second and bores out at second. But not before the Phil's able to half the Marlin lead. They get load them up and they get two runs of that inning. We will head to the top of the third. It's 4-2 Marlins. Log on to phillies.com go to the fan section for all the information and please submit your answer to on the subject line. The question is guys tonight who are the last two Phillies third basemen to hit 20 or more home runs in three or more consecutive seasons. That answer will be revealed later in the show. 4 2 Marlins top of the third. And Victor Arano is the new pitcher for the Phillies, appearing in his 54th game. Toronto has uh, we haven't seen him in a little bit. He's been battling a little bit of an injury but Gabe Kapler saying today that he was healthy and ready to go and here he is checking into the ball game here in the third. You see Cabrera stays in the game. Plays shortstop. Is that question is that the last or those that have. The last two. The last two. Yeah. The last two. So Brian Anderson will be the battle the batter and first pitch to Anderson is over for a strike. Do you know one of them. All right well if you don't I'm going to guess you. <laughs> no no it's good. it can't be me. Well it could be but. Have guys done it since you is the question. Three years in a row, 20 homers. Yeah. One more pitch. Swing and a miss. It's one and two. Well, since Merce mad at me, he's not going to give me any. No, hands. I'm not mad at you. Well, I'm mad at you. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> you got one. That's right. That's right. One two pitch. Ground ball. Foul. It remains one and two to Anderson. It'll be Anderson, Real Muto, and Castro for the Marlins. I think they already figured it out. I knew that one would be pretty easy for you guys. It's either there. We don't need your clues. Yeah, I know. One two pitch. We probably won't need them tomorrow either. <laughs> oh, I hope you do. It's an easy question. Two two pitch. Popped up, foul and out of play. It remains two and two to Anderson. Now 
foul ball past Freddy Gonzalez. So Anderson's battling with Victor Arano. Early in the season, and for a good part of the season, Anderson was you know, in that conversation for rookie of the year, but I think uh, the other two guys, Soto and Acuna, have separated themselves at this point. Does he still lead all the rookies in hits? Big swing and miss, and he strike hit, strikes out there. I think that's the thing with him is he just, I, I know when we were in Miami, what, a couple weeks ago, a week or so ago, I mean, his bat has really slowed up from what it was earlier in the season when we saw him. Second among rookies in hits is Anderson. Who took over? Hey, there's a trivia question. Get that one right. Genius. <laughs> Starlin Castro, or excuse me, JT Real Muto takes that one over for a strike. It's 0 1. He struck out his first at bat. Castro waits on deck. Real Muto's got the nice pull off going, Donnie, today. Yeah, but he has a way of. Uh, Adjusting and correcting. I hope not. Well, last in last night's ball game, he struck out. Uh, was it his first time or second time up? Looked pretty bad. And the next time up, straight away, oh, straight away center home run. Would that ball hit the knob? Yeah, it looked like it. Struck out his second at bat last night. Take a look. Right off the knob. How mad would he have been if that had stayed fair? And that one is swung on and hit the left field. Going back is Altair and Roman Quinn will drift over right in front of the 387 sign and make the catch for the second out of the inning. So Real Muto gives it a ride, but it's out number two. We'll jump to the head of the line by placing a deposit for a 2019 season ticket plan. By placing a deposit, you'll be able to secure your plan and seat location prior to the official on sale. That's for new accounts only. For more information, visit phillies.com slash season deposits or call 215-463-5000. So Victor Arano works against Starlin Castro now to getting the first two batters of the inning. One sails outside for a ball. It's 1-0. Oh. Now to Castro. Philly Fanatic has made his way out to the Budweiser rooftop. What is that? Right under the bell. Oh. That that that's recently kind of new, right? That wasn't there originally, was it? Originally, no. But it, it's been there for a couple seasons now, for sure. Two one pitch. Swung on. Fly ball. Center field. Quinn drifts back. And that's the third out. Nice job by Victor Arano. Comes in and gets the Marlins one, two, three here in the top of the third. The Galapagos gang enjoying their time out there in Ashburn Alley. It's the Marlins four and the Phillies two as we head to the bottom of the third.
Beautiful night here in Philadelphia. And a look from the Budweiser rooftop. It's a pretty nice place to watch the ball game. Actually, there's really not a bad spot to watch the game no. here in, in uh, CBP, but I do love that that shot from almost straightaway center. I tell you, I'd have I'd have some binoculars out there and I'd be standing right behind the pitcher, right under the 1980 flag with, with some binoculars. What a view that would be. Yeah, absolutely. Reese Hoskins is the batter for the Phils. Hoskins grounded out in his first at bat. It'll be Hoskins. And then Jose Bautista. Hoskins takes that one low and inside for a ball one and one. Stretching Graves out here, huh? In for his second inning of work, yeah. It's over for a strike, it's one and two. Do you find, John, that um, there are a lot more hitters that go to two strike counts yes. nowadays without swinging the bat? Yes. Than back it when we played? It seems like it, yeah. Stairs for a ball, two and two. And that comes back to the the idea that you'd like to see them be a little bit more uh, aggressive, obviously. I, I also think it's the difference in pitching, too. I think they have four pitches nowadays. They throw harder. They, uh, you don't see them as often as Reese goes down on a low and away slider, but you don't you don't see the same pitcher as much as we used to then heck I had 60 almost 70 at bats against Rick Russell maybe close to 70 against Bob Forsh you know back in the day and we saw the same guys over and over I think too is with the because there's I don't know how to say this but you know the with striking out being kind of accepted I don't think they cared about going the Getting to two strikes. Strike out, it's another out or whatever. My thinking. And you see Austin Davis starting to warm for the fills as Bautista grounds that one foul. Well, in Reese's at bat that we just watched, Reese had two pitches to swing at. Now I understand we can see up here and it looks a lot easier than it does standing down in the batter's box. I, I realize that. From our, our standpoint, Reese ended up swinging at a slider that was a ball, but he, in, in his at bat, he did take two, two pitches that he could have hit from our vantage point. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe not from his yeah. vantage point. But then the, atti the attitude of the Phillies uh, hitting personnel is. Until two strikes, look for a ball that you can drive. And if you're looking for a ball middle in or middle out, don't swing at anything that's not where you're looking. Swung on and pops straight up. Shallow center field, and Castro, the second baseman, will make the catch for the second out. That'll bring up Wilson Ramos, who walked in his only a bat tonight, scored a run. We had players back in the day, you know, the uh, Manny Sanguians, uh, go way, way back to the Yogi Berras, <laughs> the Pittsburgh Pirate, all the Pittsburgh, not Yogi Berras, obviously not a Pittsburgh Pirate, and he goes way back, but the Pirates. Um, were so proud of themselves because they could hit anything. They hit. They could hit the ball on the line if it bounced at home plate. <laughs> I remember those teams. There was no working the count. <laughs> there was no running up pitch counts. And all of a sudden that came into vogue with the money ball. Yeah. 
theory on hitting and the on base percentage. And I've had conversations with Manny about hitting. He said if it moved forward and I thought I could hit it, I swung. <laughs> the 0-2 pitch is low for a ball one and two. Well, Dubal's a little like that. You know, our our Odubel Herrera. He he's ready to let it fly as soon as he walks out of the dugout. To a fault, probably. I mean, he yeah. knows. Uh, yeah, some sometimes the stuff that he's able to get his bat on is pretty pretty remarkable. Yeah, because uh, he 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 literally feels like he can hit any pitch they let go. Yeah, you know, the hardest thing to do in all of sports is hit a baseball. Coming, especially coming 98 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> and moving. And moving. That's not fun. Two, two pitch. Ground ball up the middle. Picked by Riddle. And he's able to set himself and make the throw across the diamond to get Ramos for the final out. So the Phils go down one, two, three here in the third. Nice crowd on hand. Marlins up 4 2, headed to the fourth. Trust. Order today and see for yourself what makes Boise Paper the number one selling office paper brand in America. Delivered for free right to your desk by who but WB Mason. We're through three here in Philadelphia. And the Marlins doubling up on the Phils four to two. Four runs, four hits for the Marlins. Two runs, one hit for the Phils. And Austin Davis will be the new pitcher for the Phils. One and two with an ERA of 3.64 for Davis. 29 and two thirds innings so far this year. He'll face the left hander Derek Dietrich right out of the box. Good job by Victor Arano coming in and doing his job. Now Davis the first pitch to Dietrich is over for a strike. Well, and this is all you can hope for is that your bullpen can keep him there. Because the Marlins bullpen hasn't been exactly lights out lately. And like we said, plenty of time for the Phils to chip away, but you're right, got to keep them where they're at with the four runs. Big swing and a miss. It's one and two now to Dietrich. And there's some more action up in the Marlins bullpen. Nick McGrin, righty. Didn't he pitch last night? Mm hmm. So and he got it. Dietrich swings through that and that's the first out here in the fourth. So it's time for our timeless moment brought to you by Coors Banquet. And we're looking back at September 15th 1984 Juan Samuel breaks the club record with his 18th triple in a 4 3 loss to Montreal at the vet Elmer Flick had set the record in 1901 Samuel finishes the season with 19 triples. A club rookie record. 
Did they have fences when Elmer played? <laughs> Back in yeah, 1901. They yeah, they did, but weren't they like 450 feet, 460 to center, and 390 or 400 in the in the alleys? Sammy could fly though. He sure oh. could. Man. They they had a video of him with the music put to it one time and it was my son Jonathan's favorite thing to watch. You know, <laughs> I used to take off when he stayed on the That's awesome. 2-0 pitch. Brinson is fouled back at the plate off of Wilson Ramos. And I've never seen anyone run where like his heels were hitting him in the rear end as he's running. Yeah, he was he was fun to watch. Pretty to watch. And fun to be around. Sammy. Two one pitch. Out of play. Two and two. Didn't like that ball, I guess. Ground ball. The shortstop. Cabrera has it. Two outs. 6 3 goes to put out. Two up and two down for Austin Davis here in the fourth, and that'll bring up Austin Dean. Austin Dean has helped us out quite a bit. <laughs> He's got himself an RBI He's tonight. Playing but left field. Yeah. He's had a couple of misplays out there on left that have given the Phils a little bit of life. Is he normally well we got to find out is he normally an outfielder. That was a good question. I was thinking about that I mean, same thing. But if, if he's not though then you know Dietrich's playing a lot of outfield if he's like a corner infielder why don't you put him there. I guess if I was that smart I'd. I'd be managing. He'd be in charge of everything John. But we'll leave that to Don Mattingly. Davis is ahead of Austin Dean on two. Way inside. How did that not hit him? Is Dean able to get out of the way? He almost went parallel to the ground there. That was a little quick pitch by Austin. Or yeah, Austin Davis. He does that quite a bit, especially with two strikes. Oh, that is way in there. I want to let that one go behind you, huh? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe forward. next time. Did you ever let a ball go behind you, John? I've had a gun. <laughs> I have. No, I, How about I, you? Oh, that one went behind me. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen that a couple times this year. That face of Mitch Williams in spring training, BP. There's a few behind me. And, of, and around and up. Did you have anything to say to Mitch about no, any of that? No. I didn't. I was in there for probably seven or eight pitches and didn't get the swing. <laughs> There's the one two pitch. Ground ball back up the middle, but played perfectly by the Phils. Hernandez juggles, though, and not in time. Cesar double clutched on the throw. And I give credit to Dean, who was busting it the entire way. Some good hustle right there. Absolutely. Take another look. Just a little bit of right here. Look, look, look. Yep. Got the ball. Just enough for Austin Dean to beat it out. You know, I mean, you gotta love that. He he bobbles that ball a little bit and Austin Dean safe. You don't yeah. see that much no, you don't. nowadays. I mean, if, if he was not busting it down the line right there, he would not have gotten a base hit. Bunt right here by Sierra. Throw down to first, not in time as well. So, Magnerius Sierra able to bunt for a base hit, and now all of a sudden two runners on with two outs. They gave here Dean in the fourth. Hit. They gave Dean a hit on that. They did. Oh. And we have a pinch hitter, Michael. Yep.
Christopher Bostic will be the pinch hitter for the Marlins with runners on first and second. So Davis able to get the first two out and then defense costs him with one and then some speed on the other. And runners at first and second now, and that one's over for a strike. Wonder if that'll get changed. That ball to Cesar. To Cesar. If he doesn't bobble it, he's out, right? I would think they're going to throw behind the runner, and able to get back is Dean. What was the pitch? Tell you what, he's had a pretty interesting three and a half innings, Austin Dean. Yes, he has. <laughs> the pitch was called a strike on the outside corner, right, so two. Davis is ahead of Bostic, 0 and 2. That one's in the dirt, it's 1 and 2. But back to that error, that's interesting. Uh, the if he drops that ball, it's an error. You know, it, I've seen a lot of those kind of plays called hits. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, if you, he was backhanding the ball, it was up the middle, it was all right in front of him. I would not be surprised if that gets switched. I hope they don't. Don't do it anytime soon. I'm right with Ink over here. <laughs> Runners lead off first and second. One two pitch. This is low two and two. Top of the order for the Marlins. JT Riddle waits on deck. Swing and a miss, and he got him. So a big strike out there from Austin Davis, and the Phillies able to get out with any more trouble. They leave two to the Marlins in the fourth. We will head to the bottom of the fourth with the Marlins still clinging to a two run lead. Mason, who but WB Mason for fast free delivery. Nobody does it better. Head to the bottom of the fourth here in Philadelphia. It's Marlins four, the Phillies two. And we have just gotten word that uh, they have indeed changed that ground ball to Cesar Hernandez to uh, an error. So E4 on that, not a base hit for Austin Dean. <laughs> Didn't amount to much. Nick Whitgren is the new pitcher for Miami. He's two and one. ERA under three, appearing in his 28th game for the Fish. And Carlos Santana will be the first to face him. Santana was 
safe on an error in his only at bat. So two base error by Austin Dean out there in left field. He has also scored a run. Pitch to Santana and swinging and he fouls it out of play. It's 0 1. Swung on, fly ball, center field. Brinson is under it, makes the catch. One out here in the fourth. Nick Whitgren did pitch an inning last night. He allowed one hit through 20 pitches last night. So Aaron Altair is the batter. He walked in his only appearance back in the second. First pitch to Altair is on the outside corner for a strike. John if you take a pitch for just taking a pitch all the way why don't you take it in, in, in good hitting position rather than just hmm? yeah I, I I don't understand that either when they do that I you know I, it, it, you know if a guy makes an at, at bat in front of you early like I used to go up and think all right it's three and oh I told myself this is this, it's three and oh and I'm either going to take or you know Look for a fastball, something I think I can handle. But and I was always told by these one of your former teammates, if you <laughs> swing, you better get it. You better be on base, which didn't happen all the time, Michael. Swing and a miss, and Aaron Altair is a strikeout victim. Second out of the inning. Well, the student steal is back for all high school, college, and graduate students. $15 ticket plus the first John on us from Ashburn Alley. Options include Chickies and Pete's, Scrap Fries, Tony Luke's, or Hatfield Hot Dog and a Coke. Good for any home games in September. Order as many times as you like. Go to phillies.com slash student steal or show your student ID at any Citizens Bank Park ticket window on game days. Roman Quinn is the batter. Squares around a bunt, takes that for a strike. It's 0 and 1. It's a bit low for a ball, 1 and 1. Did y'all see that highlight last night in Atlanta of Scherzer? He had to take his hat off because he was sweating, sweating so much. Yeah. In but like in the middle of the inning, he had to go and change hats because it was like Dripping. a waterfall in his face. He, they said it weighed his hat weighed two and a half pounds. <laughs> the fact that they weighed it. <laughs> <laughs> Three game series, you have a lot of free time. Yeah, you do. Pretty humid here tonight. I'm sure, some of those guys are sweating pretty good down there. 3 1 pitch. It's long on, line drive. Right center field. Brinson back and able to track it down and make the catch. He covers a lot of ground out there, does Lewis Brinson, and able to track that one down off the bat of Roman Quinn. 1 2 3 go the Phillies here in the fourth. We head to the fifth. They trail by two.
inning is JT Riddle. Yeah, he got the two strike high fastball, got on top of it, drove it out to right center, scored three runs. And that is your Toyota turning point. What gave the Marlins a 4 to 2 lead. And that's your Toyota turning point in this game. It was indeed. Hopefully, something will turn it back in the Phillies' favor as Riddle swings through that. One and one now from Austin Davis. Top of the order for Miami. That one misses outside. It's two and one. Riddle, Anderson, and Real Muto. There's three and one. Well, you have to feel that this is Davis's last guy, regardless. With Garcia warming up, you got all right, he's coming up after him until you get to Dietrich. That one is hard hit, but right at the first baseman. Picked and flipped over to Davis. Nice play by Reese Hoskins over to Davis just in time to get JT Riddle. Way to stay in front yeah. of it, Reese Hoskins. You used to be a first baseman, didn't you? Yeah, I did. That, that, you can take that replay. Yeah, that's all you got to <laughs> do, though. You know, it's, it's, it's you know, he's look, he's a big body guy. You, you don't have to catch everything over there. You don't have to try to glove everything. You're basically like a catcher. You knock it down. You or a goalie. Try, yeah, goalie. <laughs> Bernie Perrant. <laughs> Keep it in front, and good things will happen. That's what happened there. So, first out of the inning, and your uh, thought was right. John Cruck. We're going to have a pitching change here. Austin Davis is headed out, and Luis Garcia will be the new pitcher for the Phils with one out here in the top of the fifth. Pitching change here at Citizens Bank Park. We'll be back right after this. Hopkins and Scott Kingery along with Greg the Bulozinski, Scott Palmer and the Philly Fanatic on a Phillies vacation trip to paradise January 8th through the 13th five night vacation to the Bahamas space is limited so act quickly go to phillies.com slash phillies vacations or call 1-877-833-7326 to book your trip. Luis Garcia is the new pitcher for the Phils. He'll face Brian Anderson. Garcia with an ERA of 4.50. 42 innings for the Phils this year. Check swing foul, so it's 0 and 2 to Brian Anderson. Two good pitches right there by Garcia. Breaking ball for strike one and put that fastball right up on his hands. I'd like to see his numbers. It seemed like a, he was hitting better when he was a right fielder. It's like since the movie the 30s. I don't know. 
I think Carl could probably track that down Carl. for us. Carl. Here's the one two pitch from Garcia. He's able to hold his swing two and two. Anderson. Nine miles per hour, but upstairs from Garcia, and the count is full to Anderson. Ground ball to the left side. Santana has it. Two outs. This pitch by Luis Garcia gets Anderson to ground out the third. And that's the second out here in the fifth, and that'll bring up JT Real Muto. Three-two slider from a guy that throws 99. Beautiful game. Real Muto, 0 for two tonight. Dirt's 1 0. You say Real Muto's been hit a few times this year? Not as much as Dietrich. Yeah, Dietrich's uh, tops in in the National League. Twenty. Twenty, I think. Yeah. Wow. Dietrich. A lot of guys just let the ball hit them. I mean, they're not really good at dodging pitches. Real Muto stands pretty tall pretty, in there, and he yeah. hit, hits pretty close to the plate. Catches the inside corner, so it's two and two now to Real Muto. One reason he's a good hitter is because he keeps his hands back. You can watch when he took that pitch, his hands never came forward at all. Two two pitch. Paul, third strike. And Luis Garcia comes in and gets the job done. Gets both batter he faces. Ground ball and a strikeout. So we'll head to the bottom of the fifth. Philly is still trailing by two. At the season that was for the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs, 84 and 56, second most wins in franchise history. They lost in the playoffs. What a year that Joey Manessis had. Batted 311, 23 home runs, 82 RBIs. He was the MVP and the Rookie of the Year. Cole Irvin, the Pitcher of the Year. Gary Jones, what a job he did with that group of guys as well. 
145 home runs. Cole Irvin's had, had 14 wins with an ERA of 2.57 for the Iron Pigs this year. So congratulations to those guys for a terrific season. Citizens Bank, the official bank of the Phillies. Visit citizensbank.com. 4-2 Marlins here in the bottom of the fifth. Marlins scored four in the top of the second. Phil's answered with two in the bottom of the second. And that's where we stand. Drew Wuczynski is the new pitcher for the Marlins. He's four and one with an ERA of 4.08. He'll face is Drupal Cabrera. And Odubel Herrera, who's moved into the on-deck circle. First pitch to Cabrera, it's inside for a ball, it's 1-0. Here's Odubel. Can't keep my pencil sharp here with all this, <laughs> all this writing. You know, if you got them, you might as well use them. Players? No sense having them sit in the dugout. I think the amazing thing is with Garcia starting for the Marlins, with all the call ups, and they have 11 bullpen members, only one lefty, and that's Conley. 1 1 pitch, that one is swung and hit well down the right field line, and it's going to be off the wall. Cabrera all around first, and he's going to cruise into second. With a stand up, or, well, with a sliding double. <laughs> but a pretty good way to start the fifth inning as Cabrera is a leadoff base runner for the Phils. Well, we could have used that in his last at bat, but we'll take him. Nice swing by Azdrubal. And here's, you know, look, it's four to two. It's still early in the game, it's only the fifth inning, but. Regardless of what Odubel does right here, you have to get him over to third because you know they're probably they're not going to play the the infield in. You know, Cesar hits a grounder. Now it's a one-run game, and anything you know, when it's a one-run game and you have the power that we have in our lineup, it's you know, it's one swing, it's tied up. But he, he has to be on third base after this at bat, and I know I've been. Kind of saying this all year, and it doesn't really happen. But well, Herrera takes that one inside for a ball. It's one and zero. I agree with you 100 percent. We do have enough time in the game. We're not asking for a bunt here. We're asking for him to look for a ball, middle in, and drive it to the right side of the field. Side and that hit him. So that won't get Cabrera down to third, but it'll get Herrera over to first. Still with nobody out, first and second. Well, but you know, look, you know, we've seen Cesar do it a lot this year. So yeah. Bunt for a base hit, tried it out. They throw you out at second and third. You got Reese coming up, and you know, right now, Batista. Would be the batter. Hernandez steps in from the left side. First pitch. He's swinging away and he fouls it back. It's on one. Yeah, the old theory, especially with the leadoff hitter, um, if, if you play in the game, you have to win the ball game. And I'm saying this is the old school theory is advance these runners to second, third. With a bunt, right? With nobody out in this inning. Worst case, we score a run. Best case, uh, one run. Best case, we scored two. And even a better case would be if somebody hit a home run. You must put somebody up there with a man on third and one out. Trinsky gets his sign. Pitching from the stretch. 1 1 pitch. That one is swung and hit well. Right field going back to Sierra. And that ball is gone. A three run shot for Cesar Hernandez, number 12 on the year. 
And the Phillies take the lead five to four. Well, it's not what we talked about in terms of moving runners, but the thinking middle end ball hit it to the right side. Had something to do with that home run. John, I think he, he probably was looking for middle end. And I'm not going to hit the ball to left field. Nope. And the ball wasn't middle end, it was no, away. But it leaped but right to his barrel. Yeah, but he hooked it over the other way. That's why you don't bunt. We should no one should ever bunt again. Well, they'll take that three run you homer for sure. And the Phils now lead it five to four as Hoskins pops that one up and out of play. Take another look. Pretty nice shot from the Diamond Club and three rows deep out there in right field. So now the Phils have the lead five to four and Hoskins takes that one upstairs for a ball. It's one and one. All right. You know I, I, I want to get into an explanation of what I'm thinking right now. There are basically no no absolutes in our game. Mm. Uh oh that one is swung on a hit well. Left field going back is Dean and in front of the warning track he'll make the catch. Just got underneath that one did Reese Hoskins and that's the first out of the end. There are generally two sides to every situation in baseball. I mean you may believe one I may believe one and our, our manager who is operating a little with a little bit newer mindset about the game than, than we used to. But sort of the old live by the sword die by the sword thing as you yeah. go out through the entire year. It's believed nowadays that you'll win more games and score more runs if you don't bunt. If you don't advance yeah. runners if you swing the bat you're going to fail you're going to fail you're going to fail then the big one the big right. blow is going to come. And then you're going to fail and if then the big blow is going to come. And that's sort of the attitude. The way the game is played nowadays. Well, and he said it all year. He doesn't like to give up outs, and he likes to go for the, you know, the the big inning, the big inning, yep. and the knockout punch is how he described it to me. And remember, and I think it was in, I forget where we were, where Florimone pinch hit, and I thought it's a perfect situation to bunt and hit a three-run homer. St. Louis, maybe I think earlier in the year. I like. How do you? Uh, yeah, it's good. Well, it's just like anything else. Now, after the results happen, it's uh, yeah, you can look at it, look at it from both sides, before it happens and after it happens. So, one-two pitch to Bautista is inside for a ball. It's two and two. Tell you what, it's got to be a lot more fun playing baseball that way. Not having to give yourself up? No, definitely. Yeah. I mean, how much fun would that be? I think it was a lot of fun for Cesar Hernandez a couple minutes ago. 2 2 pitch. You know, go up, go up there and let it fly. Baby. Let it fly. Have some fun. Well, that'll bring up Wilson Ramos, who is 0 for 1 today with a run scored. Cast AI powered by AWS. The exit velocity is 97 and a half. Launch angle 25 degrees. And that went 370 feet for Cesar Hernandez and gave the Phils the lead. 25 degree launch angle. That's well, 26 is optimum for a home run. That's pretty close to 26. But if you jump up to look, check this out, if you jump up to 28 or 29, you got yourself an out. Yeah, fly ball to right, right? No pitch. Swings through it. It's one and one. Line drive. 
drive out of the reach of Derek Dietrich, and that's going to go down to the right field corner, but Ramos will stop it first. So it'll be a single for Ramos, his first hit of the night. And he's a two out base runner here in the fifth. Tell you what, he has. If, 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 can you imagine if he could run, how great a second hitter he would be? The way he can hit behind runners, power to right field. Well, we don't need to hit behind runners. No, but he just can't run. No, I mean, yeah, no. They don't hit behind runners anymore. Let him bring up Carlos Santana. Bends out of the way of that one. It's 1 0. Ball was almost a strike, wasn't it? Carlos didn't think so. <laughs> Ramos with a small lead off first. Low, ball two, 2 and 0 oh to Carlos Santana. 0 oh for 2 tonight, but he did score a run. You know, back to that discussion about uh, not bunting, swinging to try and drive the ball on the ground versus in the air. The, the modern day theory about on the ground is you, you can make two outs if you hit it on the ground. You, Sorry. you make two outs quite often. Now, in Cesar's case, you're not going to double him up, probably. Right. But if he hits on the ground to the right side, you're only going to end up you know, with one out and then on first and second. But your average hitter, if he hits a ball on the ground in those situations, is going to make a lot of two outs. It's going to have a lot of two out situations by hitting the ball on the ground. So obviously, ball in the air prevents the two out double play. Makes sense. Hit him over or hit him through now. Oh, yes. right. One ends up in the Diamond Club. After it hit off Real Muto's yeah. mask. So you want to be a catcher? Nope. Ooh. So Mitch got back to me when I said a pitcher, you know, he threw some behind me yeah. on the other side and then around me. He said, I, I agree with the first two, but I can't throw one around you unless I had a boomerang. <laughs> Speaking of my girth, yeah. Maybe, perhaps. Oh, it's good to hear from Mitch. Yeah. So Santana walks, heads on down to first. Get Ruben Frank's take on tomorrow's Eagles Bucks game and why he thinks Nick Foles will bounce back, plus some insight into a new Burt's wideout and an amazing Eagles quarterback stat you will not believe. Listen to his Rube Knows podcast on NBCSportsPhiladelphia.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Davis out to have a conversation with Ruchinski. Runners on first and second, two outs. Preventing all the lip readers in the stands <laughs> tonight uh, from. They had no shot, things. Mike. No shot. But another three run shot. That'd be all right. A little distance. Well, Aaron Altair hit two last night. 0 for 1 tonight. He walked back in the second. And he steps in with runners on first and second. Pitch on the outside corner for a strike. He swings through that fastball. So 0 2 now to Aaron Altair. The eighth batter to come to the plate here in the fifth. Three runs across on the three run home run by Cesar Hernandez. It's given the Phils the 5 4 lead. Inside, one and two. Wait a minute. 
Smith and he goes down swinging to end the inning but not before the Phils wrestle back the lead big blow in the fifth a three run shot by Cesar Hernandez out there to right field gives the Phils a 5 4 lead as we head to the top of the sixth Phils up by one. Bill's uniform for the first time August 15th but his contributions thus far have paid off. Matt Klentak acquired the 31 year old all star Wilson Ramos to add much needed offense to the Phil's lineup and that he has done in his first 14 games with the Phil's Wilson batted 362 with eight extra base hits and nine runs batted in his bat and contributions have been a major plus. And it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. You see Wilson Ramos as the Phils lead at 5 4 here in the top of the sixth. And Ada Bry Ramos will be the pitcher. So Ramos and Ramos, the battery for the Phils here in the sixth. Once again, the Phils will ask their bullpen to keep it right where it is now that they have the lead. First pitch to Starlin Castro is a ball. It's 1 0 to Castro. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Now it's over for a strike, 1 and 1. Well, the thing now with our, you know, with Cesar hitting a three run homer, taking a lead, it doesn't mean Conley and Bearclaw and Steckenrider won't come in the game, but you, know, you have to think if everything stays the same and we won't see those guys, hopefully we can add on. That, you know, one run lead in this ballpark? Yeah. Oof. On a night like tonight? I'm going to talk to Donnie tomorrow and ask him. What you gonna ask him? Just you know, his thoughts on the, and I know it's necessary for him to do this, but you know he's old school. You know he, I just I don't know how he. I just want to find out his thoughts on this on this bullpen game. Like you have to have a bullpen game with the you know with a 40 man roster, and I guess that's why you can have it. But you'd think they'd have someone minor league kid who could start. And right. Has been stretched out, but maybe they've reached their innings limit. And so we're gonna miss and the strikeout for Ramos, and it's the first out here in the sixth. Well, guys, it's time now for our Ram Truck Stump the Fans trivia question answer. The question was: Who are the last two Phillies third baseman to hit 20 or more home runs in three or more consecutive seasons? And you guys got this one pretty quick, as I thought you would. Who's gonna? I got Roland. Scott Roland. And I got Mikel Franco. Mikel Franco. Roland did it from 97 to 2001. Franco, 
2016 through the present. Mike Schmidt did it 14 straight years. <laughs> oh dear God. It's pretty good, Mike. <laughs> From 1974 to 87. Pitch in the dirt, one and one. I was looking it up earlier today to see, uh, you know, I knew you had done it for three consecutive. I wanted to see 14. There was one, uh, I guess, like four or five years into it where you hit 21. So you just just got. It. Oh, yeah, that yeah. was uh, 78. Mm -hmm. And then right back into the 30s the next year and again and again and again. I led off that year in the uh, postseason. Against the Dodgers. At first. <laughs> That's how bad I was. So you were happy to see Pete come over, huh? 79. Yeah. Slot you back in the middle. <laughs> Put you back where you belong. I was happy to see the offseason, although we saw it too soon. Upstairs, two and two to Derek Dietrich. Dietrich one for two today. Doubled and scored a run back in the second. And 2 2 pitch. Line shot foul. I don't think the uh, ball girl wanted any parts of that. Wanted to pick that one. <laughs> I don't blame her. I think it was a rocket. You got to jump over and get in front of that, don't you? No. Nope. Protect the fans. Wait, was that. Kim Jackson was that the one that was down the left field line when we were down there broadcasting the game. I think it I think it was Kimberly there. Yeah. Whew. She gets a better read on the left side. I think she would have jumped in and, and saved you John. Well I doubt it. <laughs> the count is two and two to Derek Dietrich. Had on all that that Roman gear wouldn't have hurt me anyway. That's the big right. Shield, which we saw last night. It was Halloween night here at the ballpark last I night. I saw Mike. that. I saw that. He said he swung, and the ball gets away from Wilson Ramos. I thought it hit off his bat. I thought it was a foul ball. Dietrich gets himself down to first base. Did you hear that? Was that was that the glove of Wilson Ramos that I heard? I there's some boos going on. I don't know if that's. I think they're booing the call. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. They're saying he went around and it went through the legs of Wilson Ramos, kicked off uh, Jim Wolf, and well, Derek Dietrich gets himself down to first base. Brinson will be the batter. One is low and outside for a ball one and oh. I thought maybe something happened because uh, Ramos didn't go hard after that ball. Yeah that's what I was wondering if that's what the boos were directed toward. Check swing no swing. Tell you what, those microphones pick up a lot of stuff, don't they? They sure do. So 2 0 now to Lewis Brinson as Dietrich takes his lead off first. Ah. Over for a strike. Good pitch. Does that O'Brien look comfortable? It looks like he's. Shaking his arm out, he's it doesn't very fidgety, but unlike any any uh, any time I've ever seen him. Pitch, pop in foul territory. Reese Hoskins giving chase and reaches out and makes the catch. Oh no! Nice play by Reese Hoskins. 
throw went over to second base and this dribble Cabrera was there so Dietrich scrambles back and guess what guys time for our defensive play of the game. Uh, OK a Reese went a long way for that ball and uh, of course that's his natural position first base and he looked like ooh, ooh, went in the pocket. <laughs> yeah. Eventually. Then, anyway, it works. Yeah, Dubray loved it. Absolutely. And that is your Hyundai defense play of the game. Brought to you at by. At this point, brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. Well now, done. Teamwork. We could have not thrown the ball to second base. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody backing up. But yeah, Aaron wasn't backing up. That ball, oh my gosh. That one is popped way. sky high this one on the right easier. side of the diamond. Hoskins doesn't have to go very far for that one. And that is the final out of the inning. So, able to work, work past the uh, strikeout pass ball, and the Phillies will head to the bottom of the sixth. They have a one run lead. It's five to four. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. 5-4 is the score here in South Philadelphia. Phillies took the lead in the bottom of the fifth. Tyler Kinley will be the new pitcher for the Marlins. Appearing in his fourth game for the Fish. And Roman Quinn will be the first to face him. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Lined out to center field his last at bat. Oh, nice play by Brinson. First pitch to Quinn is inside for a ball. It's one and zero. Another pitcher. Another pitcher. There's a shock, huh? Oh, this has back. A That's coming back our way. Oh, right in front of us. I don't think you can get it. I yeah. don't know how they could get it in here. It would have to be along a little bit more of a line. That means more exit velo to hit us somewhere where we don't want it to hit us. <laughs> Which how's would be your, anywhere, quite how's frankly. Your, how's your reflexes? Well, they're okay. We got plenty of time, but I don't want to break a finger trying to catch a ball spinning like that. You know. Who's gonna who's gonna handle it's it? It's coming at, if it's coming at my face, I'm just gonna let it hit me. <laughs> By the time I get my hands up, it be there anyway. O2 pitch. I, I, I would love think, a real Muto. I would think these bullpen games would be tougher hitting. Oh. Huh? Seeing a new guy every time. Yeah. Fresh on. Yeah, that's not to start the whole discussion about it but that is the you know some folks think the evolution of baseball could end up could end up there. Upstairs Roman Quinn. 
Well, isn't uh, less starters? Sergio Romo, the only guy that closed the game and then started, started the next the game. day. Yeah. But I don't think he'll be the last mm -hmm. to do uh, that. No. A two two pitch. Got him. So Roman Quinn is a strikeout victim for the second time tonight. And it's one out here in the sixth. And that'll bring up as Drupal Cabrera. Cabrera didn't start the game, but checked in. He's going to play eight innings. And getting his third at bat here in the sixth. One for two. Betting 266 on the season. And J.P. Crawford has moved into the on-deck circle for the Phillies. Twenty four thousand six hundred ninety five here tonight at Citizens Bank Park hoping the Phils can hold on to win this one. We know that the Braves lost earlier today seven to one to the Nationals in Atlanta. That game finished in a driving rainstorm. Did you see how hard it was raining in Atlanta when they finished that game? Yeah. And you know how about the Braves though? Free tickets to anyone that had to be relocated yep. to get out of harm's way with uh, the hurricane coming through the Carolinas. Yeah, that's a good thought. Nice thought. Yeah. Just you know, even if it's a couple hours of trying to forget what's going on, it's some sort of relief for those for the people's lives to to move forward. Mm -hmm. Swing and a miss by Cabrera, and he is the second out of the inning. Two strikeouts for Kinley. Yeah, Kinley looks pretty good out there. I mean, I saw him hitting 98 on one of his last fastball. And that looked like a splitter of some kind. Ooh, look at that ball yeah. go down. Bottom drops out. Cabrera swings over top. So J.P. Crawford will be the batter now. Ramos faced four batters in his inning with a couple of strikeouts. His night is done. J.P. Crawford swings and hits that one well. Deep to center field. But going back at the wall, Brinson's going to have room. And he makes the catch right in front of the Phillies bullpen. Gave it a ride, but not far enough. So we will head to the top of the seventh. Fills up by one.
It's time now for your Delaware Valley Honda Dealers game summary. And the Bills on top five to four. Justin Bohr with a big pinch hit two run single earlier in the game in the second inning. And then Cesar Hernandez with the big shot, the three run home run back in the fifth that gave the Phils the lead. That's where we stand right now. It's Velasquez got the start, but it's been a collection of bullpen guys that have uh, kept the lead where it is right now. And Hector Neris will be the next of those. Men, 47th game, record one and three with an ERA of 5.18 for Hector Nurse. So he is the new pitcher for the Phils. Well, let's scratch off Hector. Yep. I thought Hector was uh, uh, reliever of the month. Uh, he was in August for his save work. Apparently he's not going to get the save tonight. He has been very good since coming back from the minor leagues. He misses there, so it's one and one to Sierra. Magnuri Sierra is two for two tonight. Two singles. He scored a run. Corners are in. I guess they think maybe he's thinking bun. He did last time. He squares there and pulls it back. It's two and one. Tell you what, I miss half the game trying to figure out who's still in. <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah, oh, that got yeah, that was uh, God, off the mask of Wilson Ramos. Oh man! You said it the other day, John. <laughs> At least won a game for Wilson Ramos. It seems like. Boom. Yeah, it, it seems like. Every one of our catchers, at least once a game, they take one right off directly off the face mask. Almost still uh, trying to get his jaw, jaw, <laughs> back to where it needs to be. And here comes Scott Sheridan. They're going to check him out. Gabe Kapler out as well. He's just saying. Uh, obviously, the concern here is is the concussion. Jorge Alfaro. Is Gabe not allowed to get any closer to, to the conversation? Well, that conversation has come to a close, so I guess uh, Scott Sheridan was satisfied with what Wilson had to say, and uh, he's going to stay in this game. The Buffalo is tough. We'll get a day off tomorrow, I'm sure. Count is two and two. And that one's a bit low. And in the dirt, three and two now to Sierra. It'll be Sierra. For the Marlins here. And the nine hole hitter. And then top of the order for Miami. Three two pitch. And hung on by Wilson Ramos. And that's a strikeout for Hector Neris. So Neris wins that battle. And one out here in the seventh. Just a whole different demeanor with Hector since he's been called back up. And look, he missed his spot by a lot. He wanted that ball down and away. But, you know, it's 95 and it's thrown with confidence and conviction. And, you know, I think earlier in the season when he started struggling, he was hoping they didn't hit it. Now he knows he can throw it by guys. Big difference. Okay, another player. Big out. Rafael Ortega. Big, Big out to keep that speed off the bases with yeah. no outs. Absolutely. Ortega steps in and first pitch is over for a strike. Mark him off. Pops straight up. Ramos off of the glove. Here comes Carlos Santana. And he'll make the catch. A couple feet from home plate. And that's the second out. Hector was saying, I could have caught that. 
Are you interested in becoming a Phillies ball girl for the 2019 season? Now is your chance. The Phillies ball girls are looking, the Phillies are looking for athletic, energetic, and community-driven women to serve as role models. Applications are due by the end of 2018 calendar year with tryouts starting in 2019 early in the year. Interested applicants should visit phillies.com slash ballgirls for more information. Top of the order, and that's swung on, and that's well hit. Right field, and that one is off the wall. Riddle's going to round first, then into second. He goes the throw, not in time. And uh, Cabrera tries to well, do what he can to get Riddle off the base, but he's a two-out base runner over there in scoring position at second base. Uh, Riddle's second double of the game. That first double was our Hyundai turning point. And here, yeah, he's got that up and away. Uh, so you got to use that top hand. I tell you, that short, quick swing on that high pitch works, John. Well, you he's saw how, twice. You saw how hard his top hand was working to get over top of that ball. If you don't use it, it's straight up in the air. You got to keep keep this guy struggling. That's right. Brian Anderson steps in and takes that first pitch over for a strike. So Naris gets ahead quickly. It's 0-1. I got the numbers from right field third base. We got Riddle on second base uh, making sure he knows the count. What are those numbers John. Yeah, he's hitting 282 as a right fielder 91 games and only 245 as a third baseman in 61 games. There you and go. As you get out in the outfield you mind wanders. Oh two pitch swing and a miss and he got him. So Hector Neris able to strand. Riddle over there at second base and work through this inning. Good work by Hector Neris in the Phillies bullpen. We head to the bottom of the seventh. Phil still with a one run lead. By Cesar Hernandez. Yeah, we were uh, asking for the bunt, and he bunted that one a long way. Big three run homer to put the Phillies up 5 4, and so far the bullpen has made that stick, and that's our T Mobile built for baseball, Cesar Hernandez, three run homer. And that's where we stand right now. Phils with that 5 4 lead, five runs on four hits and an error for the Phils, four runs, six hits and an error for the Marlins. Kyle Bearclaw is the new pitcher. For Miami. I mean, it was 57th game of the year. The array of 4.41. And it'll be the top of the order for the Phils here in the bottom of the seventh. And here is Cesar Hernandez. One for three with that home run. And first pitch over, first strike. Murph, we got bullpen action. Thanks for the update, John. Yeah, no problem. It's like Tommy Hunter by the windup. Yep, I think it is. One pitch inside. It's one and one. And they have someone up there doing aerobics. 
Can't tell who it is. Broke my reading glasses. How did you break your reading well, glasses, John? Sometimes they get thrown. <laughs> Hard hit ball, but right at the second baseman. Castro has it. It's one out. Reese Hoskins is the batter for the Bills, and it brings us to our Nissan upgrade. Upgrade to the technology of tomorrow, today. Most home runs since August the 10th. There he is on that list. 49 home runs since the August the 10th of 2017. J.D. Martinez of the Red Sox with 64 since that time. That's a pretty good list. Davis and Stanton. Ramirez on that list as well. Jose Ramirez, he's got, what, almost 40 of them yeah. this year, 30-something of them this year. Yeah, he's been terrific this season. But Reese has been very consistent with the power since being called up last year. Almost had one tonight. Had one last night. Takes that one over for a strike. It's so on two. Oh, don't you hate that? Two nasty sliders. <laughs> I mean, talked about him taking some pitches to hit. I mean, neither one of those balls were pitches to hit. That one's outside for a ball one and two. There is Tommy Hunter. He'll check in in the eighth for the Phils. Love that microphone down there in the bullpen. Looks like it just leaves his hand and it hits a glove. <laughs> That's a good thing, I guess. One two pitch. Swing and a miss. Hoskins goes down swinging. Four in a row. That's the second out here in the seventh. And that'll bring up Jose Bautista. Jose 0 for 3 tonight as well. Pitch to Bautista's <laughs> over for a strike. Four sliders to Reese to strike him out, and he throws a fastball right down the middle. You had to think he was sitting on something off speed, but I don't know if it's in a good spot. You ain't gonna hit it anyway. Sometimes the game's just not fair, Michael. Strike. It's one and two to Bautista. Two outs. Nobody on here in the seventh. Hit low. Two and two. You have to think he's going to throw a slider at some point this at bat, don't you? Probably right here, John. There it is called third strike. And Jose Bautista well he didn't like it. Looked like a pretty good pitch. So the Phils go down one two three here in the seventh. We'll head to the eighth. Five four Phillies.
Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Delaware Valley Honda dealer or visit DelValHondaDealers.com. And by Jefferson Health. Call 1-800-JEFF-NOW or visit JeffersonHealth.org. Top of the eighth. 5-4 fills. Tommy Hunter will be the new pitcher for Philadelphia. He's been pretty good of late. 4-2, 3.57 ERA for Tommy. Yeah, that, uh, that ERA has been creeping down yep. lately, and that's, you know, we've needed him, too, in these late situa late inning situations, close games. I think the, you know, the thing is, is, like, you wonder who gets the ninth. Is it going to be Neshek? Is it going to be Sir Anthony? Combination of both? Possibly. Well, let's get there with the lead. That's yeah, that's the that's key. That's the idea. You know, Tommy's going through three, four, five right here. Yeah. And the first pitch to JT Real Muto is a big swing and a miss, so it's 0-1 to the Marlins catcher. It'll be Real Muto, Castro, and Dietrich to the heart of the Miami Marlins order. for a ball two and one. Every time a Phillies pitcher records a pitch of 95 miles per hour or more Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity the fastest internet in Philadelphia. Ground ball Cabrera. I have not heard uh, Derek Jeter's, Jeter's name mentioned in a while. I don't think. Well, I'm, I'm almost positive Derek is not here. He has traveled with with the Marlins uh, from time to time. I don't think he's here in Philadelphia. Although I do think some of their new ownership group is here in Philadelphia. You know, talking to some of the people with the Marlins, you know they they haven't tipped their hand, but. There seems to be this assumption that they will have money to spend with free agents, and you know the, the the likely candidate if they have that type of money is you know a kid from Miami, Manny Machado, who's mm -hmm. going to be a free agent. And I don't know if Manny has expressed interest in going to play in Miami, but you know it's I don't know how do you turn down your hometown? Well, well, easy, I'm sure he wants an opportunity to play in the postseason, right? And, and not that he won't this year. Yeah. With the Dodgers. Down out of play. Yeah, and, and, and John, we talked about it last night. A lot of people will thought perhaps KT Real Muto would be traded yeah. at the trade deadline, but they decided to, you know, hold on to him. Obviously, he's one of the best catchers in the National League, both sides of the game. So, you know, they think they could build around him. Line drive back past Tommy Hunter. It's picked by Hernandez. Strong throw. Nice play by Cesar Hernandez for the second out. Right through the wickets of Tommy Hunter. Tommy tried to be a hockey goalie, didn't he? <laughs> well, it's <laughs> good that he didn't have a kick save and a beauty there. Knock that baby down. That was a great play by Cesar. Very nice play. No, he didn't try to knock it down. Tommy no. tried to get out the way. It's like he was skipping rope. <laughs> well, he knew where Cesar That's was. Right. He's a veteran. Salty. Starting Castro thought he had up. a knock. That was a good strong throw from Hernandez falling away from the play. And he gets Castro easily. So two outs and Derek Dietrich is the batter. Pitch over for a strike. This is outside one and one now to Dietrich. Take a look at that last pitch. A little bit outside. 
That one is oh. swung on, hit the center field. Going back on it is Roman Quinn. He's at the wall, and he makes the catch. One step from the wall, reaches out and grabs it, and the inning is over. Dietrich gave it a ride. But Roman Quinn, we know he can cover some ground out there, right in front of the 374 sign, and he makes the catch. So, Tommy Hunter gets the job done, and we'll head to the bottom of the eighth. Fills with that 5-4 lead. University of Maryland University College and the Cleveland Indians are headed to the postseason once again they have clinched the AL Central Division for the third straight season what a year it's been for them they've been in control of that division most of the year and Yasiel Puig he is heating up three home runs today for Puig he's had five in the last Whoa. two days yeah they played a close one today yeah. 17 to 4 oh they the were Cardinals. all over the Cardinals which is good news for the Phils as the Cardinals are battling for that final wild card spot as well. Drew Steckenrider is the new pitcher for Miami. And he will face four, five, and six for the Phils. Game number 67 for Steckenrider. What, Wilson Ramos. What's the record for most pitchers used in a game? Are we creeping up on it? Looks like Neshek down there in the bullpen. So, are you talking about combined or oh just yeah. for one team? Almost sends that one down the right field line. The thing is, there hasn't been pitching changes, but right. one, right? We, yeah, there's only been the one pitching change. Austin but Davis coming out each inning. Um, yeah, when you well, I don't want to say this out loud. I'm not going to say. It. I was just looking at the clock, but I'm not going to say. It. Ramos takes that one inside for a ball, two and one. Carl's on it. We're going to have an answer for you in a minute, John. I got 14 today, tonight. I guess it's still night. Still night. Someone is fouled into the night. Wow. We'll take a look at what uh, the Phils have done. So Velasquez went two and he allowed the four runs. And then Arano, Davis, Garcia, Ramos, Neris, and Hunter have combined for six scoreless. Ground ball to Castro. And Ramos is out 4 3, goes to put out, and there is Pat Nishek up there in the Phillies bullpen so it appears he will start the ninth <laughs> Carlos Santana will be the batter so for two tonight scored a run 
back in the second inning. A little bit high for a ball. It's really amazing how Santana has with, with the big swing that he has how he such command of the of the strike zone. And how he gets so many pitches out of the strike zone like that. It's amazing. How many walks he have right now? Should know that. I know it's a lot. It is significant amount. 3 0 pitch is over four strike. He's in the 90s, right? Closing in yeah. on 100. 98 walks. Wow. Getting ready to get 99 right here. This could be number 100. Yeah, he walked earlier today, so 99. This would be oh, coming straight back at us, but over our heads. And the count is full three and two. Yeah, he walked uh, back in the fifth inning, so that was walk number 99. Came in with 98. Three two pitch swung on and hit well to right field going back on it is Sierra at the track and he's going to have room and make the catch. Just got a little bit underneath that one did Santana and that's the second out here in the eighth. Yes he did you talk about uh, game of inches that was probably like a game of half inches from being a home run. So that'll bring up Aaron Altair. Over two tonight. Hasn't put a ball in play tonight. Over two with two uh, or with a yeah, walk, two yeah. strikeouts and a walk. No time like the present, John. All it takes is one, Mark. That's right. Popped up down the right field line. Long run for Sierra and for Starling Castro. And no one's going to get that, much to the delight of Waldo. Got his dates mixed up. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, I think he was here last night, wasn't he? He was I, dancing I so. uh, a yeah. little bit on camera here. Uh, was that last night or tonight? I think it was both. I think we saw him last night, or at least someone dressed exactly like him. <laughs> Can't hide from us, Waldo. We know where you are. It's a great holiday that Halloween. The 0-2 pitch. So John, tell us uh, what your when you look back when you were young. Do you remember your favorite Halloween costume that you might have worn? I wore a Miami Dolphins outfit once. I remember that. Don't know how. Don't know why. <laughs> I was gonna say, what was the significance of that? You know, one's off the hands. I was a long, I was a Lone Ranger one time. Lone I'll Ranger. Never forget that. I had a mask on. Had a couple of uh, Fanner 50s, you know, cap guns and holster. Yeah. A young Mike Schmidt. Yes. Did you have trigger? No, that was that's Roy Rock. So. Oh, wrong horse. Oh well. We're headed to the ninth. Bills with the one-run lead.
Arcades come to town Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the 28th, 29th, and 30th. Sunday, September 30th at 3.05 is Fan Appreciation Day. Free PGW 2019 scheduled fathead to all fans, so order your tickets now at phillies.com. Five to four here in the ninth. And Pat Neshek will come in and try to lock this one down for the Phils. This would be a good one. He's two and one with a 1.29 ERA. 21 innings pitch for the Phils. Pedro Florimon has checked in for defensive purposes. And Cabrera slides over there to third. Santana moves over to first. And the first pitch to Lewis Brinson is over for a strike. It's 0 1. Brinson 0 for 3 tonight. Reshek, ground ball, the shortstop. Florimont unable to handle it. Quick throw, no, not going to be in time. So checking in is Pedro Florimon, and how often does that happen? The ball right to him. And Brinson is safe on the error by Pedro Florimon to lead off the inning. Yeah, I mean, say what you want. Uh, he's got more range, probably a better defensive shortstop than Cabrera, but he comes off the bench cold and he's in the game. and. You, you know, you just don't have the rhythm and feel. Ball took a little jump at the last. Uh, uh, you know, I don't have any excuses. I made uh, 500 of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if the Phils can work around it here. As Austin Dean steps in, he takes that first pitch for a strike. Looked like Dean was bailing on that. It was right over the plate. I don't think he picked it up very well. I don't think he saw that. Yeah, I think you're right. So if it continues throughout the rest of the at bat. Take another ground ball right to the shortstop. Be okay. No one pitch. And a miss. So and two. We see Sir Anthony Dominguez starting to get loose as well. So 0 and 2 to Austin Dean. He's check. Trying to close the door. And help the Phils close the gap a little bit more on the Atlanta Braves, who lost earlier today 7 to 1. Go to pitch. Stairs for a ball 1 and 2. Agnery Sierra waits on deck for Miami. Brinson leads off first. And that one is fouled down the right field line and they'll find the seats. He shakes funky. Yeah. Hello to Colby. Jittery jumps around out there. <laughs> he looks like. He looks like me trying to get my pillow comfortable at night <laughs> when I go to bed. My wife's yelling, will you lay still? Ground ball in the shortstop. This could be two. Florimont over to second. Double play, 6-4-3. And Vishek able to get that one done. Pedro Florimont to Cesar Hernandez over to Carlos Santana. And two outs for the Phils here in the ninth. Yeah, that helps, right, yeah, Johnny? Uh, yeah, as soon as he caught that ball, and the out was recorded first base. He gave a big clap with his glove. He, you know, look, do you want one hit to you there after you booted one? Absolutely. Yeah. They get the double play, and now it's kind of all forgotten. Well, Sierra will be the batter. The Marlins are down to their final out. And he squares around the bunt and fouls it out of play. It's 0 1. Don't know about that play with two outs in the ninth inning. I might hope to hit a ball in the gap to get in run uh, scoring position. Unless he plans on laying down a perfect bunt and stealing second. <laughs> Which he well I mean did he did lay down a perfect bunt earlier for a base hit in this game. You know one pitch. 
is over for a strike and it's 0 2. So Phillies one strike away from locking this one down here tonight. And the fans, the 25,000 that are here at Citizens Bank Park are on their feet. The pitch, ground ball to the left side, charging it. And throw across the diamond in time. As Drupal Cabrera to Carlos Santana and Pat Nishek comes in one, two, three, and gets the save. And the Phillies win this one five to four and close another half a game within six and a half of those Atlanta Braves as they get their win tonight and a series win over the Miami Marlins. First series win since August the 2nd through the 5th versus these Marlins. That was a four game sweep here at home and the first time with uh, seven scoreless innings by the bullpen guys and no walks. What a great job by the guys out of the bullpen. There you see the number seven innings, two hits allowed, eight strikeouts. And of course no runs and they were able to hold on to this one and the Phils battle back and they win it a good win for the Phils. T time for our W.B. Mason delivery of the game and it's Cesar Hernandez. Yeah, you go back to the fifth inning and you know Michael and I were sitting up here thinking maybe we should bunt try to bunt for base hit or move the runners in some way. Well he not only moved them he moved himself all the way around with that big three run homer to put the Phillies ahead to stay bullpen great job but that's our delivery of the game brought to you by W.B. Mason. Well Pat Nishak is pumped up he gets the save tonight and caps off a terrific night for the Phil's bullpen. Phil's win at five to four we'll be back to put a wrap on this right after this.